Hi guys, Sandy here. Um, today we're going to discuss Julio Cesar's jacket, Vogue 9341. Now, let me give you a better picture. Look at that jacket. Isn't that amazing? All of this detail and then the style and the cut of the jacket is great. So a couple of things. I measured myself and then I measured the pattern. And the pattern that they wanted me to make was about six or eight inches too big all the way around. So the ease on this pattern is enormous. So please check the uh, pattern pieces. The measurements on the pattern pieces themselves will actually give you a better judge of whether it's going to fit you. So with Vogue patterns, you take your body measurements and then they determine the ease. But if you actually look at the pattern pieces, it'll tell you what the finished garment measurement is. And that's really important because your ease is different than my ease. And some people like eight inches of ease. Some people only want an inch or two of ease. And with this jacket, I didn't want a lot of ease because it's kind of a unstructured, big, tenty jacket. So I went with a smaller size. And I, as you can see, it, it fits great. I absolutely love this jacket. So the first thing that happened when I saw this jacket, I went and searched for a fabric. And in my stash, I had this felted wool that I had bought on the sales rack at Joann's. You know, sometimes you go there and you find stuff that's just like, oh, I've got to have that. So I bought this a couple of years ago. It's a felted wool. And look at how crazy that is. That's the right side. And then the wrong side is this kind of mottled, almost leopard-like, but not quite. So love, 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 love. Didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but I bought three yards, which actually turned out to be the perfect amount for this jacket. Now, <laughs> when I cut it out, I cut it out backwards. So the way this jacket crosses over, mine crosses over the other way, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. I'm, I don't have a problem with it being a little different. And then I went through the process of laying out the fabric pieces, how, I was going to see how it would look with the different patterns because I have the right side and the wrong side. And for this front panel here, I used the wrong side of the fabric because I thought that these overlays would look better on the wrong side. And then I just carried that wrong side out into the sleeve because, and the collar, I carried it up into the collar because it gave it a more unified look and more um, less choppy. You know, if I had changed the sleeve or the collar, it would have been kind of all chopped up. But the process for me to do that is to lay the pieces out as I cut them, lay them out, make a determination. Sometimes there's changes, but you know, it gives you a good place to start. So on this, the jacket front here, I'll give you a close up. This, un the, uh, this is the under layer. And then the first layer you put on is this piece here and I used a black faux leather, it's almost like a cotton with a faux leather applied on top. And that piece goes all the way down the front. And then on top of that, you lay this shear, and this is a burnout shear that I have, and you lay that on top. So the faux leather looks something like this. Well, it looks exactly like this because this is what it is. Right, and I just cut that. And then the shear, it's a burnout shear. So it has, and these this was all stuff I had in my stash. It has these burnout places, right? And it's got this zebra look and it had a little bit of purple in it. So that's how we moved onto the purple. Then I used this stretch faux leather and I used quite a bit of this for trim and for the soutache piece down the front. This, I keep this, all the time I use it. I buy five or six yards at a time. It's great for accent pieces. I actually have a piece on here. Um, I use it for trim. This is trimmed out with the faux leather. And then I was looking for something to bring out that purple. So I had this purple crepe in my purple wool crepe and I cut a piece of bias off of that. So that's how I got all of these pieces on the front. So the process is interesting. You lay down this first piece and they want you to stitch it and then trim it. And now it's already stitched to your backing. That didn't make sense to me. So I just st stitched it on the edge. So my pieces might be a little bit bigger than what the pattern said. And I used my uh, brother sewing machine, um, 
CS6000, which I love. It's got some really cute stitches. So I played around with a bunch of different stitches on the machine until I found something that I liked. And when you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure that you use the fabrics that you're using in the jacket because it's gonna behave a little differently. Same thing when I went to sew on the shear, I did, again, I laid the shear down on top of this and then stitched a bunch of different choices on my machine until I found two, two that were complementary and also worked well, well with the, the bulk of that fabric because this, this uh, wool, this felted wool is, is really heavy. And uh, so what I ended up with, and you can see here on the camera, you can see that the stitching on here, or maybe you can't see very well. There, that's better, the light's better. So you can see the top stitching. So I just top stitched it down, right? And then what they want you to do, the next step is to take and stitch every half inch across all this shear. And then every fourth stitch across, you go out into the, so you can see it here, you go out into this. So this is all stitched every half inch. And then you go through and you cut it open. So it is going to shred because it is a sheer, which kind of gives it this really funny modeled look, which I like. And then there's a large piece of soutache that goes down here. So I just use the faux leather because it's very stretchy and you can actually get a curve on it. And then the crepe, and I used the crepe down here and I hand stitched this one on. I didn't stitch it on with the machine because it's so small. I was afraid I wouldn't get a nice stitch on it. That takes a lot of work, that process. Uh, that probably took me like a whole Sunday just to do the top layer of that jacket. And then after that, it's a couple of hours. It doesn't take that much longer to put the rest of it together. The back is just plain. It's the plain wool. You add the sleeves in, which are no big deal. And then uh, the collar. So the collar calls for trim going around the top and then trim all the way around. And it seemed really too high for me. So I made more of a traditional edge on the collar and just folded it down. And then um, this is all hand stitched down, right? So it's a cute collar. I just avoided the trim around the top. It seemed to be too much. I didn't do a buttonhole. It calls for a bound buttonhole, which is beautiful, but I was really, there's so much fabric going on here and it's really thick. So I used a big jumbo snap. Oh, that's not the jumbo snap. Here it is. I used a big jumbo snap. There it is. See, this just snaps and the button is on there. So that snaps. This little snap is an interior snap. So that other piece doesn't flop down. So there's one on the other side to match that. What else did I change? It calls for um, internal binding of the seams. So you do bias binding on all the seams. But again, this fabric, which is a which is a beautiful finish, but this fabric was so heavy that I just, I surged the edges instead of uh, binding them. Binding them would be beautiful. It would be absolutely gorgeous. I, I don't think I intend to take this jacket off. When I put it on, it'll be more of a jacket than a coat. So... Um, I didn't think that was a real issue, but binding the the um, the the inside seam allowances was a beautiful way to go. Now, I tried it on after it was all done, and the <laughs> the sleeves seemed really short. And on here, they they don't look quite as short as they did when I actually put it on, because she has these long, beautiful black leather gloves, and I didn't have anything on my arms because I really wanted to kind of get a truer picture. And they just, the proportions just didn't look right for me. So what I did was I took this faux leather, I sewed, I, I cut a 12 inch piece and then I folded it wrong sides together and stitched it on the edge of the sleeve. So that made it pretty easy. Now it's good on both sides and then I just folded it back. So I basically extended the sleeve a little over three inches, which was which is really just enough. It just gave the sleeve a little bit more length. So this piece was 12 inches. I folded it wrong sides together on itself, so that made it six inches. And then um, and then I just folded it up to make a little cuff. So it, it ended up being just about three inches. And uh, it added just a little bit. And it looks cute on this side. And then on the other side, well, that's what I was really worried about was how it was gonna look with everything else going on. And it looks really cute on this side. So um, that was pretty simple. And then also for the binding, I changed that up a little bit. I used the faux leather 
and this is very soft and supple so I needed to actually wrap it over the fabric because the fabric gave it some stability. Um, the fabric's pretty stiff. I did put a fusible interfacing in the collar on one side of the collar because the collar really stands up and I didn't want it flopping around. So that seemed to help quite a bit. But yeah, I love this jacket. So cute. Uh, I'm leaving for vacation soon and I think I'm going to take this with me. I might wear it on the plane. It actually would be a nice warm cozy blanket to wear on the plane as a coat or I can take it off and wrap it around me because it is it does have that kind of tent thing going on. So I could use it as a blanket and it certainly would be very warm. And it doesn't wrinkle, so that's kind of nice. Although I probably won't be able to wash it. I think it's gonna have to be dry cleaned. I haven't tested the fabric, but I didn't have any intention of throwing it in the washing machine anyway. So I will um, figure that out. I'll probably use those dry cleaner things that go in the washing, in the dryer, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, yeah, so Julio Cesar 9341. This is my one of my hashtag, hashtag make nine outfits and um so cute love it a lot of work a lot of work but it's inspired me to try this technique on something else i'm making a denim skirt and i think i'm going to try to do something around the hem with lace and i think that would be really cute so i will see you soon